the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. In other words, you got, you got your laws straight, but you don't have the spirit of the laws straight. Your rules are right, but you don't know the end of the rules that God didn't just make the rules so that people's life could be more complicated. God didn't make rules so that people's life could be more difficult. God made rules so that the rules could help people live a more fulfilled life. I mean, how righteous is your 
righteousness. Why do you say your righteousness is unrighteous? And then, and then as I looked at it, I found out Dr. Mays on pretty good ground. Because when Jesus dealt with the two, he didn't call unrighteous. He says, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Y'all get it? Y'all get it? Yeah, yeah. He didn't say theirs weren't good. He just says, if yours weren't if yours is not any better, you're in bad shape. Let me run through this real quick then. So, I got a problem. I got a problem with that. You know, we use the scribes, Pharisees, everybody talk about the, 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 the Pharisees and always, most of the time, talk about it in a negative term. But you do know that all Pharisees weren't. Do yeah. you know that, that basically what they stood for is pretty good? So why does Jesus have some displeasure with them? Hmm. That's what I want to start today, the displeasure. What, what is Jesus' problem with the Pharisees? Why is Jesus saying that our righteousness should exceed their righteousness? He didn't call them unrighteous. He just said that our righteousness ought to be better than theirs. Wow, y'all think of me. I know it don't bother y'all. That kind of stuff bothers me. Huh? Try to see where is the Lord coming from. And, and when you look at it, you'll see that Study the Pharisees, they, they're pretty good guys. They're some pretty righteous. These were the men who were really into the law. Yeah, yeah. Now basically, what they believed that unless you obeyed the laws of God, you could not go into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Basically, their, their, their attitude was the laws of God is what saved you, your obedience to the law. What y'all think it'd be funny? Some people yeah. feel that right now. Yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah. That if you don't obey the word, you're not worthy to go to heaven. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. Yeah. They they pretty righteous guys. These guys, they they studied the law and they studied it close and they did as best they could to keep the law. These were pretty righteous guys. I mean, you can say what you want, but they lived pretty good lives. Mm -hmm. They kept all these rules and regulations. These are not some loose, lip, loose acting people. These are folk who had a high standard for living. And they tried to live according to that standard. The scribes were usually those taken out of that group, but they were those who made a study of the law. They didn't just read it, they wrote it. Didn't have a printing press. You couldn't just sit down to a Xerox machine, a duplicate machine. <laughs> Young people don't know what a Xerox machine is. <laughs> you didn't have a duplicate machine. So the only way that you could duplicate the word, someone would literally have to sit down and rewrite it word for word. Well, this chore, sure, this responsibility was that of the scribe. They would do And because you're writing it, it's hard to write it without reading it. It's hard to write it without being more familiar with it. So they would be more familiar with the word, with the law, than the average person who didn't write it at all. So if, you don't, if you don't read it, you don't write it, you probably don't know it. That's why it's so important, expedient that you read your Bible on a regular basis. Don't just carry it. You can't get it by osmosis. You got to spend some time in the word so that the word can get in you. So these were pretty righteous folk. These were folk who had some high standards. And yet, as high as their standards were, uh, uh, Jesus had a problem with their righteousness. Why did Jesus have a problem with their righteousness? He said, because, because 
He did not come to destroy the law. Come on here somebody. He came to fulfill the law. Y'all better hear me today. Jesus and Nessa gives us this ultimate uh, lesson in hermeneutics that, 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 that he explains to us the difference. That, that, you know, he's talking about righteousness, two sets of righteousness. He said, yet one righteousness exceeds the other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Both are righteous. I like this. But, but one is more righteous than the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, like a, it's like a church business meeting. Everybody in the meeting is right. Well. I wish I had a written. But if everybody right, why you got to vote? <laughs> you see, you can't, you can't, everybody can't be right and you end up with two sides. Right. Mm. Oh, I wish I had a I didn't get all this, but I got to feel kind of good. See, because you don't vote on right. Right is just, come on here somebody, right is just right. Right is not right because I see it that way. Right, right is right, right is right not because I believe it to be so right. is right because God says it's right. So he says I've come, I've come not to destroy the law because the law and I are on the same side. The law and I are, are, are headed toward the same direction. We, we are trying to get to the same end. That me and the law, we agree. I don't have a problem with the law. I just have a problem with some of you lawmakers. Yeah. All right. He talks about the display. Let's, let's investigate. Not only do I see the display, but I see the due diligence versus the delay. Due diligence versus the delay. Jesus was more concerned with the spirit of the law yeah, yeah. than he was the letter of the law. Amen, yeah, amen. Therefore, you see the difference between he and the Pharisees. Right. See, the scribes, Pharisees, they're more concerned with the letter of the law. And he was more concerned with the spirit of the law. Yes, Y'all look at me, <laughs> let me. Let me break on this. How many times was Jesus about to work a work and the Pharisees and scribes were watching him to criticize? Yeah, quite a few times. One of their big complaints was he was healing people on the Sabbath day. Right. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You remember that time when that, that lady was bent over and they watched him to see if he was going to straighten her up hmm. on the Sabbath day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that time a man was possessed with an evil spirit and they watched him to see if he would heal it on the Sabbath day. You know that time the man was crippled? But that's concerned he's going to heal it on the Sabbath day. Oh, I wish they had They're concerned about the letter of the law. And no concern for the spirit of the law. Do I have to witness this? You know that time the disciples walked through the field and the disciples got home and they grabbed some wheat. I uh, rub it together, rub the husk off so they eat the wheat. Yeah. And when they come out, he said, uh, what y'all doing breaking the law? <laughs> he said, breaking the law? He said, they're hungry. Yeah. Uh, have you heard that David and his soldiers went over to the priest and ate some bread that was relegated to the priest only? And then he says, don't you know that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath? In other words, you got, you got your law straight, but you don't have the spirit of the law straight. 
the rules are right. But you don't know the end of the rules that God didn't just make the rules so that people's life could be more complicated. God didn't make rules so that people's life could be more difficult. God made rules so that the rules could help people live a more fulfilled life. Wish I had a witness here. But now, what am I going to do? I got this woman here who's suffering, been suffering all this time, and she's been over. And according to what you telling me, I'm supposed to wait till Monday morning. I got to wait till Sunday to, to heal her. And I'm saying that if the woman is suffering now, and I have the power to heal her now, come on here, somebody. Why would I delay? Because of your rule? You don't really understand your rule because God ain't about rules and regulations that hinder and hurt. God is about trying to help somebody. God is about trying to build somebody up. God is not about promoting suffering. He's about eradicating suffering. It's really in my best interest, in the Lord's best interest, to heal her right now. See, the problem is your focus is on the Sabbath while Jesus was concerned about the people. You were more concerned about lip service and I'm more concerned about your heart. Right. Oh, see, maybe if we kind of re-evaluate where we are as a church, maybe we could minister better for the Lord if we put down some of our rules and regulations and start being guided by the Holy Ghost. We could let the Lord mess with our hearts and say, creating us a clean heart and renewing us the right spirit. Maybe I wouldn't get upset with you because you don't have on a black dress today. Maybe I wouldn't be upset with you because you don't have a white dress on first Sunday and a black suit on first Sunday. Maybe I wouldn't get upset if you forgot your robe and then you can't sing today. See, not to me. God ain't concerned so much with what I got on. Snow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
child. Let me, let me wrap, this thing, wrap this thing up. And God is not so much about our lip service. Yeah, he wants us to do. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Don't announce it. Show it. Yeah, You got to tell somebody where you're going. Just go. Do it. You know, you, you can invite folk to come. So sometimes that's me to make an appeal for folk to come on Wednesday night to Bible study. I said, the problem ain't that they don't know about Bible study, the problem is they don't come. I wish I had a witness here. I don't mind making a commercial, I don't mind, you know, inviting y'all, but, but you know, it ain't about no invitation. You, you know what the problem is, but where is your heart? Do you have, do you really want to please God? Yeah. Do you really want to study His Word? Do you really want to grow in the Word? Do you really want to do better? Do, do you really want to be better? Yes. Let me close and talk about this. I'll let y'all go watch the game. So, the dwelling, the dwelling, the dwelling, the dwelling, the dwelling. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, if you have some Holy Spirit, you have a, the indwelling yes, sir. of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. If I dwell in the right place, the right person will dwell in me. You know what John 1 14 says? Yeah, and the word was made, come on here somebody, flesh and he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Do I have a witness here? Uh, Romans 10, let me read that for you. <laughs> Romans 10, verse 4. Well, that's that verse who says, I, My heart desires to pray to God for that they might be saved, and they have a record that uh, I've had a record that they have a zeal of God without a call to knowledge. Yeah. They being ignorant of God's righteousness and going around to establish their own righteousness and they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go again. See, you can't you can't be godly righteous uh -huh. when you <laughs> when you try to establish your righteousness. Yeah. We need folks to stop trying to establish your right, because God don't give a fat rat about your righteousness. <laughs> You got, you, can, you got to make sure that you understand God righteousness. Look at verse 4 right there in that text. It says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness in everyone that believes. Y'all better hear that. That Christ is the end of the law. That ain't true. Christ is not the end of the law. He just told you, I came to fulfill the law. But he said, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Come on here, somebody. In other words, is that your righteousness is not righteous enough unless you got some Jesus in you. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't get, I don't get. <laughs> Your righteousness is still not righteous enough. All right, all right. I've never been to jail. I, 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 I've never been divorced. I've never been this, that, or you can have a whole list. And God said, I don't care. Your righteous still is not righteous enough. But, but your righteousness is really all right if you believe in the right righteousness. Come on here, somebody. Your righteousness is made righteous if you believe in a fellow called Jesus. Yeah. My faith in Jesus is what makes my righteous righteous. Oh, because my faith in Jesus is who makes the difference in my life. Yeah. Oh, I have a witness here. Yeah. So whatever, what really happened, Jesus is the self-disclosure of the revelation of what righteousness really is. Yeah. I didn't know what righteous was until I met Jesus. Yeah. You heard about me healing on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said righteousness is all about you healing somebody. Yeah. It, it really is not about what day you heal. 
but are you healing somebody? Yeah. Yeah. It really doesn't matter uh, how many people are looking at you, but are you pleasing God in what you're doing? Yeah. 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 It really doesn't matter whether, whether y'all vote on it and you agree that it's right. You can have the whole church vote on it. If God says it's wrong, it's still wrong. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many of your compadres say, yeah, I ain't done. It doesn't matter what men say. The question is, what does God say? It is not righteous unless God says it's righteous. Yeah, yeah. The other day, they took uh, Dr. King and they killed him. Don't you believe one man shot him? It was more than just one man. It, it, was, a, it was a group of folk who shot him. It, it was a nation that shot him. Just like y'all talk about Donald Trump, like he's the only one. Donald Trump ain't the only one that stormed the Capitol. Right, yeah, right, yeah. It's a thinking that stormed the Capitol. What bothers me is that you have some cold, so called righteous people storming the Capitol. They, they claim they're doing what's right. You got a lot of pulpits claim you're standing for right. When what you're standing for is directly opposite to what God stands for. Yes, uh, I see it here. He said, yeah, if you want to be right, you've got to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. If you want to be right, you've got to exceed the righteousness of man's righteousness. If you want to exceed righteousness, uh, you've got to go beyond just what you see. Uh, all the way to the living word. Yeah, the written word said you can't heal them on the Sabbath day. But the written word said I'm going to heal them right now. The written word said wait a minute uh, and wait till times are better. But the living word said, no, we've delayed long enough. We need to be about it right now. Have you ever noticed when somebody's trying to do good, they always want you to wait a while. Yeah, they always want you to wait a little bit longer. We're going to change that for you, but the time ain't right. We're going to do it, but we can't do it right now. Let's wait just a little bit longer and then we'll be able to make some changes. But that question keeps ringing out. How long do I have to wait? That's the same way you told my great great granddaddy to wait. And here we are generations later and now you're telling my children to wait. God says I'm tired of waiting. I need to be about my father's business. I need to be about his business right now while the blood is running warm in my veins. Do I have a witness here? I'm closing now and I'm going to close with the word. Michael says it's no big mystery. You want to know what the Lord requires? Michael said I'll tell you what God wants from you. Yes, look at Micah chapter 6. Let's start at verse 7 because he got some stuff in there I want to talk about. He said, will the Lord be pleased with your thousands of rams, uh, with 10,000 of rivers of all? Yeah, shall I give my children the firstborn for my transgression? Yes, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul. Yes, what is it that the Lord wants from me? Does God want me yeah, to have a bunch of annual days and praise his name? Does the God want me to be gathered together in a whole lot of outward celebration, counting, crying the right words with the wrong heart? You can say hallelujah, but your heart can still be in the toilet. You can say amen, but your toilet mind can still get you messed up. You can have on clean clothes, but still have a dirty heart. You can scream loud and still not say anything. No, no. He said, what really pleases the Lord? Is the Lord pleased with all of your sacrifices? Is the Lord pleased with all of your loud prayers? Is the Lord pleased with your heavenly 
to say, no, no, but what does the Lord require? He said, he has shown you, oh man, what is good, and what does he require thee, but to do justly, yes, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God, to do in other words, you can't claim you're a child of God if you don't like justice. But you can't just rebel out justice the way you want to do it. Justice is not something that's partial. Justice is not something uh, that I hand out, uh, yes, uh, prejudiciously. I, I don't hand out justice uh, just to the ones I want to have justice. Uh, I don't just hand it out to the rich folk. Uh, I can't just hand out justice uh, to my favorite folk. Uh, I can't just hand out justice uh, to folk from the hood. Uh, yes, justice, uh, he says, has to be uh, levied, uh, yes, uh, all the way around. Uh, I can't to treat everybody uh, with some justice. Uh, I got to treat everybody fair. Uh, I got to treat everybody uh, like I want to be treated. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, but you got a problem with justice uh, because if we all live by justice, uh, we going to be in a bad way. Uh, if we all be just, uh, we all be unjust uh, because the same justice uh, that makes me treat other people fair uh, is the same justice uh, that could Condemns me, but the truth be told, we all fall short of the glory of God. The same justice that declare him guilty says, I'm also guilty. When Jesus died, he didn't just die for winos, he was dying for deacons, he died for preachers, he died for choir members, he died for church folk. Yes, I need more than justice. So I can come in there. You better learn how to love some mercy. Yes, I need mercy. Yes, I need mercy. And I need to know that I need mercy. You see, it's right yeah, that you have mercy. But you can't beg for mercy if you're not willing to give some mercy. He said, forgive us our debts. I wish I had with it. As we forgive those who trespass against us, forgive our sins as we forgive those we've sinned against and those who sin against us. I better ask somebody, are you willing to exercise some mercy? Yes, mercy is the answer. Jesus is the answer. But Jesus says, it's not enough that I show you mercy. You got to go around to some folk who don't know me. And you got to show them some mercy so they can see the personification of mercy. They can see mercy come alive. You see, they might not know God, but they do know a child of God. They might not know Jesus, but they know a symbol of Jesus. And if Jesus is your Savior, you ought to tell somebody who Jesus is. You ought to tell somebody, yes, how he forgave your sins, how he gave you another chance and gave you a reason for living. I'm tired of church folk acting like forgiveness is for somebody else. You might as well confess all have sinned and fall short. Let's <laughs> go. 
put some stuff on you, and people will dislike you for what you got on. Because at any time when God gets me in trouble with somebody, we need to be in trouble. You don't like me because I got Jesus on my head? Well, you wouldn't go like me no way because I don't have Jesus just on my head. I got him in my heart and my soul.
said myself, but God gave it to him and I could feel it. Yeah. Now he was reading me alive. Right. He said he was dead and like a hole in my heart. I told you, I learned from an intoxicated white man that killed Dr. King. And a ball talking trash. The one thing I learned, you can kill the messenger, but you can't kill the message. But you can't kill the purpose. Yeah. Right. Physically, he's gone, but he's still there. Yeah. 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 Physically, he's crossed on over his transition, but he's still here. Physically, he talks about a dream. He's still here. Somebody said he was, he was changing over to the economic. Well, I know that was true, and I know that's why he got killed. See, Lord, you talk about you dreaming and you got faith and all that.
Lend a hand if we just seek your place first and 